Hey guys, it's Patrick Hall with fstoppers.com and recently I teamed up with Profoto to share six of the most useful lighting setups that I use when shooting a wedding or shooting a bridal shoot. If you didn't catch the first three, you can click on the video here or in the link below. This is part two where I go over the three final setups that I like to use. Let's jump right into it. All right, so now I wanna show you how you can use a little pop of flash to improve your natural light. We have this beautiful soft light hitting the wall very evenly. Everyone's gonna look good in this because the light is so soft. Let me go ahead and show you what this looks like with just natural light. I'm gonna do these vertically. And my thought is if I can do three shots and put them next to each other, it'll be kind of a cool three shot panel. As you can see here, the light looks really good. Sometimes you might have issues with soft light where the dress is starting to blow out a little early because you're trying to get the exposure perfect and white always blows out the quickest. So I think these shots look great just with natural light, but if you wanna add just a little finesse and add a little bit of directionality, but still maintain some soft light, this next tip is definitely one you're gonna to wanna to master. So off to the side here, what we have is the two foot white beauty dish. I've removed the soft baffle just so that I can get a little harder light. And because we're outside, sometimes to overpower the natural light, you want to take that baffle off. I'm gonna have Gene put the light, let's go ahead and put it right off to the side. The goal is to have it again kind of 45 degrees just off from her nose so that it's casting light down, but then we have all this soft light that you can see hitting me coming in and kind of acting as the fill. So to prepare this shot for my flash, I'm gonna go ahead and lower the exposure just a little bit, maybe two thirds of a stop from where we were with the natural light. Let me go ahead and show you what that looks like here. So as you can see, this shot is just slightly underexposed, but that's what we want because now we're gonna fill in our scene with our beauty dish. So because a beauty dish has this panel in front that blocks a lot of the light and it kind of lets the whole dish fill with light, I have to bump up my exposure a little bit more than I might with a softbox. So I'm gonna set this at level seven, even though the light is relatively close to our subject. And now if I take a shot, You can just see there's now some soft shadows coming under her nose, under her chin. All of her dress has a lot more shape to it. It really brings the detail and the dress out, which is always important at a wedding. So we still have some detail in the shadows where we want it, but we're able to add that directionality, which I think improves the image significantly. Now you could do this with any of the softbox options. I just chose the beauty dish because I think it's a little edgier and I do like how small this is. You can pack this in a bag. And so in many cases, I'd actually travel with this collapsible beauty dish over some of the larger soft boxes. All right, so here we are in a really beautiful location and you might have some kind of bench at a venue and you're trying to mix up your poses by not having the bride stand every single time. This is definitely a picture perfect scene. However, I don't know if you can see this in the camera, but up here we have a lot of foliage that's blocking the natural light. It's also introducing some green tint because the leaves are all green. And if I take the shot here with just natural light, you can see compositionally and the model, everything looks great, but the light is just kind of boring. So for this photo, I was thinking, why don't we light from a completely different angle than what we've done in the past? Let's put the light directly above facing down. Let's go ahead and get our light and let's just start with a bare bulb flash. All right, so we have our A2 here. I have Gene pointing the light from top down. Let's go ahead and take a shot here. And as you can see, it's super dramatic. It's almost like stage lighting. But if you zoom in and look at the shadows under Adiris's nose and cheeks, I mean, this is just not gonna be acceptable for most of your clients. It's not even acceptable here. So as you can see, hard light from this angle is not gonna work. But if we soften the light, I think we can get a really interesting usable image. It's about to start raining here. So let's go ahead and put on our three foot Octobox and see how big of a difference this is gonna make. Once again, with the OCF2 adapter, we can just put all of these light modifiers on our strobes, no problem. I love that about this system. So now that we have the softbox attached, I'm just gonna go up one stop in power to account for the baffle. And now, as you can see, the light is a lot softer. If we zoom into her face, I mean, the shadows are there, but they're much more pleasing. And this shot just looks so natural. It doesn't scream flash photography. Now, if this angle is a little too dramatic for the couple that you're working with or the bride that you're shooting, let's have Jean just move the light forward just a little bit, keep coming. And just by having the light wrap around the front a little bit, it's gonna remove the shadows even more while still 
maintaining that directionality. And you know, I think actually this might be the perfect spot for the light. This looks great. It still gives this dimly lit vibe, but it lights our subject in a really beautiful way. My goal for this shot is kind of that paparazzi shot where it's hard light close to the camera, but we're able to get all of the lights in the background and maybe even a little camera motion. In order to make the colors look the way that I want, I'm gonna add a half CTO to really warm up my key light. I'm gonna go ahead and put a grid on here. This is the Click Grid 20 degree. That's just gonna keep the light really on our subject. And then I might add another CTO gel on a second light and put that behind our subject to kind of add some light from the back, but I'm not gonna really know until I get out there and shoot this. Now, I wish I could tell you where to get this little light stand. I have never found it after I bought it, but it's essentially a plate with the smallest little stand. And what I love about this is I can take it apart like this and keep it in my bags. It takes up no space, but it's perfect for when you need to do a two light setup or you want some light from behind and you don't have an assistant to help out. You can just mount this thing and hide it behind somebody. Look how easy that is. Somebody needs to make this again because I've never been able to find this after I bought it. All right, so as you can see, the sun has set significantly. It's much darker. We're kind of in the blue hour. And I thought it would be great to do a shot in the streets of old San Juan. And for the styling of the light here, I'm going for kind of a glamor image where I have really hard light fairly close to the camera. But then I can also use a second light to backlight these incredible cobblestone streets. We also have the lights of the town coming on, which are gonna kind of blend everything together. Sometimes when you have one backlight and you're in the middle of nowhere, it screams two light flash setup. But if you have some other ambient lights that you can bleed into your background, it kind of makes the whole image look a little bit more cohesive. As I mentioned earlier, we are using a grid and a half CTO on the main light. That's gonna give a little bit of warmth to our subject. The second light is about 30 feet in the background. It's on that little handy stand that I have. And I've put a full CTO on that so the light's a little bit warmer. And with the blue light from the sky, the city lights in the background, and then the kicker light in the background, we can kind of blend all of those together so that it looks really authentic. And then with our key light directly over the camera with the grid and the CTO gel, it's gonna just light her and make it look kind of like a old snapshot where you have the on-camera flash and it looks a little more fashion friendly. So let me show you what this looks like with the key light only, and then I'm gonna turn on the backlight so you can see how big of a difference this makes. So that looks really nice, very hard light, lighting up her whole dress, it's very bright and vibrant. Let's go ahead and turn on our backlight, which is about 30 feet away. And now you can see it's illuminating a lot of the street. Because I have it so far back, it's lighting up most of the street and blending in these little lanterns on the side I think is gonna make this effect look kind of more realistic than it would if it was just total darkness back there. So to get this shot, it's a little bit of a juggling act between the ambient light, your key light, your backlight, and then of course, as the sun is setting, you're gonna be changing your exposures even more. I think as it gets later in the night, you're gonna be able to drag your shutter, let more of the street lights come in, and it's actually gonna look better. So if you can time this perfectly, the payoff is gonna be huge. All right, and look right here. We also have to avoid people in the background. All right, so we're losing our daylight. It's starting to get dark out here. The wind's coming in, it might start raining, but I think we're gonna walk away with some incredible shots. Hopefully you guys enjoyed this small tutorial and you can take some of these lighting tips and use them in your own photography. So there you go, six different lighting setups that anybody can use out on location when shooting portraits or wedding work. If you missed the first three lighting setups, go to the link in the description or click on the video here and you can check that out. If you want any information about the lighting gear that I used in this video, I've put all of that in the description as well. Everything from the A2 strobes to all of the different light modifiers. If you enjoy photography and you wanna become a better photographer, definitely head over to fstoppers.com slash store and check out our full length tutorials. Lee and I have made a tutorial on wedding photography, but we have a lot of tutorials featuring different photographers on a whole bunch of different genres. 
from architecture to landscapes to headshots, swimwear, product photography. We even have a video on insects and macro photography. So we have something for everybody. We also just released the brand new photograph of the world, Japan. So if you enjoy following Elia Licardi, definitely check that out. Use YouTube to save 15% on any tutorial. And maybe you're at work and you can't watch our YouTube videos. Definitely go over to fstoppers.com where you can check out our written articles. We have new articles every single day on everything from the latest news, gear reviews, and photographic techniques. So definitely check that out. I really enjoyed producing this video and I wanna thank our sponsor Profoto for allowing me to go out and use some of their gear to photograph a bride here in Puerto Rico and Old San Juan. Subscribe to our channel if you want more videos like this and I will see you guys very soon.